project-based approaches to assessment are a great way for students to be able to create and collect evidence of their understanding throughout a course and then present that evidence to you as achievement of learning outcomes. However, the tools involved in this process are usually quite clunky, difficult to use, not very user-friendly. So this is why I wanted to propose this tool, Gamma Today, as a nice way that students can create a portfolio of evidence throughout the period of a course and beyond um, that can be easily built and shared with you and any other potential um, interested parties. So the tool that we're looking at is Gamma. Okay, so in my previous video, I showed how Gamma could be used with the AI function here to quickly and easily create um, a presentation or a document or a web page in minutes, just prompting um, the AI engine. Now, that's not what we're looking at today because when you do that, it uses credits and eventually your credits run out and you know we don't want to have a tool that requires um, students or educators to pay for access. So while that's good um, to quickly create presentations initially, in the long term, we're looking to use this tool without the AI function to ensure it stays free. And as I mentioned, what we're looking for today is to create an e-portfolio. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the templates option. And they have many different offerings here. And what I quite like is this personal um, portfolio site option. So if we take a look at this, it's got different areas or slides that can be developed. Um, I can quickly change the um, visual aesthetics and once I'm happy with the design, I can say to use this template. Okay, so the great thing about this tool is its ease of use. Um, visually, I can quickly change you know, how it looks, um, the colors, the images, etc. I can quickly change the content. And here is where, you know, you might want to um, give specific guidance on how students can set this up um, but the the information they submit is quite flexible so for example so we can add text and descriptions into um, each of these um, containers if you like but i think where this app comes into its own is the ability to integrate other sources of media into this one environment and then to be able to share the whole thing very easily. So let's take a look at some of that functionality. So again, I've got many options here to change the how things look. I can add images from different sources. Um, again, if we were going down the more creative assessment route, we're asking students to create digital artifacts around whatever discipline um, you focus you have and then how do they collect them into one environment? So here, you know, we can add videos, for example. Um, if we add a YouTube video, you know, this is the previous one I created on how to um, use this tool to create presentations. Um, that's easily embedded. I can also add, you know, we use Loom quite a lot for students to talk over their presentations talk over their creations and justify what they've done. Even TikTok and Spotify can be embedded quite easily. And then you've got options here to embed um, PDFs, elements from Google Drive, Mirrorboard, um, Office 365, etc. So this is a great tool. As, this, as students progress through a course, you'll have touch points where they need to show evidence of their learning. And how this is broken down and structured is obviously dependent on your course um, specifically. But once it's all done, um, what I like to do is I like to ask my students to present this. So they come to class, everything's in this one container, and they can just present it by, you know, walking through these slides. And I can play that within also. 
book here so they can present that in the class. Um, maybe they get feedback and advice on where they can improve the portfolio. And when they're totally happy, we can submit. And this is something that's quite nice as well. So they can share the link with me at any time and I can be a viewer or I can edit. Again, this is great for group work. Um, you know, if, if everybody's got access to edit, they can update together um, or they can export and export as PDF is a nice option. If you want it submitted through uh, Turnitin or something like that, um, it's, it's quite nice to have the PDF version. And they're just now experimenting with this option of exporting this as a PowerPoint file. Okay, so when the PDF is ready, it looks something like this, and I can just click through those slides um, that have been developed. PowerPoint version looks something like this. So it's created PowerPoint slides um, that are editable. So I can change what I put. And once it's in presentation mode, those embedded media um, options are also um, clickable and can be interacted with. So that's the PowerPoint version. And the final way that this can be shared is it can be embedded by accessing the HTML code there. So it can be embedded in your learning management system or other similar uh, websites, for example, if um, students want to go on and make this part of a bigger portfolio, for example. Um, and then there's individual um, collaborators, as we mentioned, that can be added. So it's super flexible and functional around how we share and how we gather and, and collect that body of evidence. It's a great tool. And as I say, if you don't use the AI writing function that's built in, even though it's a powerful function, um, it does use credits. So if we don't use that, if we only input our own content, then it remains entirely free. So try it out and let me know what you think.